Hey everyone, I'm Brian with Ovidia, and in today's video I'm going to give you a quick overview of a new rack extension for Propellerhead's Reason. It's called Synchronous, and it's a really cool new way to kind of totally destroy your audio in really awesome ways uh, and do it all from right inside of Reason. Again, rack extensions are really expanding the abilities of Reason and allowing you to work specifically within Reason in order to finish your production. So let's talk a little bit about Synchronous from Propellerheads. Now Synchronous is, as I say, a rack extension. It is free for Reason 7 users until June 30th, 2014. So if you have Reason 7, you're going to want to get the Reason 7.1 update. Or if you have Reason Essentials 2, you'll want to get the Reason Essentials 2.1 update. When you get that, you can then navigate to the Propellerhead store and take a look at the rack extensions where you'll find Synchronous and you can get Synchronous for free and add it to your rack right now. Uh, now if you don't already own Reason, uh, if you get it before June 30, 2014, you'll be able to add Synchronous to your rack quickly and easily. If you get it after that, uh, of course you're still going to be able to purchase Synchronous as a rack extension for Reason 7. Synchronous is a multi-effect loop device with freely designable effect parameters and modulation curves. It features four different effects, which you're going to be able to control by making use of Synchronous, and that's distortion, filter, delay, and reverb. Each of these are going to be able to be controlled and modulated by utilizing modulation curves inside of Synchronous' interface. By drawing in your own modulation curves in the display, you can assign these curves to a desired effect parameter and you'll get a really flexible way to be able to uh, repeatedly modulate effect parameters and all of this will stay in time of course with your reason song as you are working with it and in, all you need to do in order to add synchronous is simply instantiate it as an effect uh, for an instrument. I found that it works really well on drums. Uh, it's a great way to glitch out drums and uh, get some cool character to drums that you would normally have to program in very very carefully and can be very painstaking and and uh, time consuming and you're not going to have to do that if you're making use of Synchronous. Now the standard loop length inside of Synchronous in case you're wondering is going to be two bars. Uh, if you run Synchronous at half speed you'll get a maximum loop length of four bars and so you're gonna be able to control and modulate about two bars worth of audio but of course this will repeat and so if you're not really looking to get the same sound which you're not going to be probably wanting if you're using an effect like synchronous you won't really have to worry about that loop length and you can just sort of freely design your sound the way that you want to design it inside of synchronous when you get synchronous you're going to get access to over 100 uh, modulation patches designed by sound designer Nucleus Sound Lab specifically for Synchronous. So if you simply click on that browser you're going to be able to browse some of the presets. You can also open your browser to browse even more presets for Synchronous. This is a great way to start to get a feel for Synchronous and start to just sort of get some very quick and easy inspiration by making use of Synchronous on your track. Moving down the Synchronous interface we have our curve design tools. Now first of all we can select a tool and this is going to allow us to choose what type of curve we're going to want to draw into the synchronous interface. We can choose the rate and we have uh, you know this is the same kind of rate settings that we've seen in so many other synths and other effects starting with 64th notes and we have 30 seconds and 16th note triplets and etc. And each of these is going to change the timing of that uh, actual modulation curve that we're going to be drawing in to Synchronous's interface, which we're going to get to in just a second. Uh, you can change the speed that you're going to be controlling uh, as you're going to be making use of drawing in those curves inside of Synchronous. You have control over master offset and phase and dim controls. Now with that loop length in mind, I can actually change my loop length in Synchronous by making use of the slider that's on the right hand side of Synchronous here. Now for each of my modulation sections, I can actually change the loop length for that modulation section. So here I've changed number three and I'm doing that by simply clicking and dragging this small flag. So this means that this indicator right here as it plays back in time with reason will actually stop when it hits this flag and start looping back. 
But then if I switch over, let's say, to modulation section number two, I can leave this at the full length. And this means that, again, this indicator will reach all the way to the end of this flag and then loop back. So I can set different lengths for each of my modulation controls, which will allow me to be very selective about how I'm going to be making use of my modulation curves, maybe the timing of those curves, and how they're going to apply to the audio and affect that audio as it's played back through Synchronous. Now you'll also notice these freeze and kill buttons here on the right hand side of the Synchronous interface. Now that sounds a little scary maybe, but all that these are going to actually do is uh, by clicking on freeze, you're going to stop the playback of the corresponding modulation curve and freeze its current modulation value. You'll also see the kill button. Now the kill button, as you can see when I uh, enable that, is actually going to deactivate or mute the corresponding modulation curve. Let's look at the modulation control knobs. And the modulation control knobs are used for setting a modulation amount, positive or negative, for the effect parameter right below each modulation control knob. So each of these modulation control knobs corresponds with the knob that's directly below it. So in the case of this first one right here, it's going to correspond with the distortion amount. So all that I need to do in order to control the distortion amount, again, is simply turn this knob. And I can set negative or positive values in order to control my modulation. Uh, now, the modulation knobs are all automatically color-coded as well according to which modulation curve you happen to be working with. So each of these knobs can actually be assigned to three separate modulation curves. So I can dial in one modulation curve right here for the distortion amount, and I can turn that up by making use of the first modulation curve, number one. Then I can select number two. Now you can see the knob is colored pink. I can turn this, I can set a negative value right here. And then I can select modulation curve three. Now my uh, knob is blue, and again I can turn this. I can set a positive value that's maybe just a little bit different from modulation curve one. So what this is going to do is allow me to control the modulation control for each of my modulation curves that I currently have active and that I have drawn in to my synchronous interface. And each of those modulation controls, again, is going to be uh, controlling the effect that it sits just above, the parameter that sits just above for each of these different effects. So as you can see here, I have a, cur I have a control for distortion character, I have a control for filter frequency, I have a control for filter resonance, and etc., etc. And this, again, is going to allow me to be very selective and dial in each of my modulation controls based on the curves that I have drawn into Synchronous's interface. And, of course, let's look at those effects that we have access to in Synchronous. Now, first of all, I have the amount knob and the character knob. Now, the amount knob, of course, is going to uh, allow me to control exactly how much distortion is going to be active in my mix, and the character is going to set the character of that mix. Now, uh, that effect is going to vary depending on the selected distortion type. Now, my distortion types, I have four that I can choose from right here, and that starts with distortion one, distortion two, I have lo-fi, and I have ring modulator. Each of these, again, is going to apply a different character of distortion to my mix inside of Synchronous. I also have a post filter button. If I click the post filter button, this is going to route the distortion section after the filter section instead of before. That's the standard routing. So that allows me to, uh, again, set the distortion section after the filter section in case you want to be a little more specific about your distortion control. And finally, you can enable or disable distortion control by clicking on the distortion button here at the bottom of Synchronous's interface. Next up, I have my filter. Now the filter is pretty straightforward. If you're familiar with the way that filters work in uh, you know, equalizers and et cetera, and, so, and when you're working uh, and producing music, you're gonna know how a filter works. But I have filter frequency control. I also have a resonance knob right here. This is gonna set the resonance amount of the filtered signal. Finally, I <clears throat> next up I have the filter type that I can make use of. Next I have the lag knob. Now if I increase this, I'm going to get smoother frequency variations when the frequency parameter is modulated. What does that mean? Basically means that I can smooth out the way that my filter is going to be applied to my mix in Synchronous, which again allows me to 
maybe get a smoother or easier to use sound uh, in my synchronous effect. Maybe if I don't want that, I can leave my filter lag at 0%. Next up is delay. Now delay is where I can start to really get those glitch and stutter effects that you might be expecting to get with an effect such as synchronous. You heard a little bit of that earlier. And uh, the delay is where I'm really gonna dial that effect in. I'm gonna do that by making use, of course, of all the controls that I have available to me in the delay section. And that starts off with the amount knob, and that's the amount of the delay signal. Of course, 0% on the far left, and then I can turn that all the way up if I want to 100%. I have the time knob. This is going to allow me to set the time belay, uh, between the delay repetitions. Now if I enable the sync button right here, I can set my delay sync time. You can see in this little tooltip here as I turn this, this allows me to set my delay sync time in time divisions. And so I can get a little bit specific. You can see I have a number of different selections that I can make use of right here. Otherwise, I can disable that tempo, that sync button, and I can set my time based on simply a delay time, which is set in milliseconds. The final effect is reverb, and this is pretty straightforward. I have a reverb amount, I have a decay amount, I have a reverb size, and I have reverb dampening, and then I also have a send and return switch, which I can make use of a very similar to the send return switch that I have in my delay effect section. The last section is not really an effect, but it will allow me to do some very cool effects to my audio, and that's the level section. The level knob is going to allow me to set just simply a level, but what this can do is, uh, by utilizing, again, the modulation control knob just above the level, I will be able to get a pumping or a side chaining effect, which is, again, desirable in a number of different production types lately, and uh, so I can dial that in by simply uh, modulating the level by making use of the modulation controls in conjunction, of course, with the modulation curve inside of Synchronous's interface. Uh, and so by dialing that level and then dialing in my modulation control, again, I can get those sort of pumping or breathing effects that you would usually have to make use of a couple effects to do. You'll do that in really just the turn of a few knobs by making use of the level control inside of Synchronous. You'll also see I have an in and out switch right here. This will allow me to select if the level control should be routed before or after the rest of the effect sections in the signal chain. So maybe you don't necessarily want for uh, the overall sound to be routed uh, before all of the effect sections you made use of, or maybe that is something you're looking for. You can utilize the in and out switch in order to dial that in. The easiest way you're going to get to know Synchronous is, of course, to start playing some audio through it. You can see it affords me all kinds of very cool sound design options, and I can do all of those real quickly and easily and on the fly by making use of Synchronous's interface and my various tools in Synchronous as well. Uh, we're really grateful to Propeller Heads for providing reason to us in order to be able to do these tutorials. So I do highly suggest that you guys check out Propeller Heads Reason at Propellerheads. Dot se. I hope that this was use, useful to you guys. If I missed anything, if you have questions, comments, anything else, please feel free to find us on Twitter and on Facebook. Or, of course, you can email me. My email is brian at obedia.com. If you want to take this one step further and you want to learn one on one with an Obedia tutor just like myself, give us a call here at Obedia. You can find out how you can work one on one with us through a remote desktop. We will work on your own computer with you teach you the latest production techniques, techniques that you are looking to learn, whether that be uh, music production, recording, mixing, mastering, all of these different things that can be so daunting in the world of music production will help you demystify the world of digital audio. That's what we do best here at Obedia. As always, guys, I'm Brian from Obedia. I want to thank you for watching, subscribing, commenting, and checking us out. Please feel free to subscribe and please stay in touch with us. If you have a suggestion for a video, be in touch, and I would be happy to see what we can do to make it for you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time, and take care.